cars were colorful in the 1950s, and not just red and the occasional blue. There were turquoises, pinks, greens, corals, two-tones and tritones, a regular palette of piston-pumping pulchritude. There was choice. Today, you have choice. White, black, or silver. And for the car's interior, did you want the beigey gray or the grayish beige? Whoopee! In the 1950s, there were dozens of colors to choose from, and not just the outside color. For example, buying a 1956 Ford, you could choose any of these fabrics in any of these colors, in all kinds of combinations. The story with transistor radios was much the same. The 1950s offerings were fun and colorful and decorative. But in the 1960s, like most of the cars, they got drab. They were reduced to being a single color, often black or white, which some will argue aren't even colors. And these color-free radios were often trimmed in silver metal, not unlike the dashboard of a 65 Chevy. Color, starting in the 1960s, was beginning to be not just avoided, but shunned, almost as if it was feared. And we are living in the same sorry state today. I hear you grumbling. You don't think it's true. Well, today there is color, but it has been assigned to children. Adults aren't allowed, certainly not male adults. Men are permitted all the sartorial flair of Chairman Mao. Rampant, colorless uniformity infests the business world. Even so-called business casual forbids color. Wear color and you're just not serious. You try wearing a green outfit and see how far you get. That wouldn't even be allowed as sportswear. And a pink shirt as business wear or sportswear? You're not going to want to do that in most parts of America, if you know what's good for you. It's not quite so bad over in the women's department, where they're allowed pink and a less limited palette, but go into any department store and you'll have no trouble finding the men's section. It's that gray one that sea of brownish gray, that colorless blob where hangs, waiting for you, the clothes you are allowed to wear. As bad as that is, nowhere is it worse than in consumer electronics. Once again, children are exempted and are allowed to have electronics devices that are yellow or red or even multicolored. But take a look at what you get to choose from. This is what's being offered up at your local electronics store for you. After turning on color in the early 60s, there was, in the late 60s and early 70s, a short-lived resurgence of it. A brief golden age when color was back. Panasonic issued their Panapet and Tootaloop radios in primary colors. Harvest Gold and Avocado Color appliances showed up in the kitchen. This brief golden age of color was quickly swatted down and is spoken of today only derogatorily. Remember that avocado color refrigerator we had? What were we thinking? And, oh my gosh, an orange can opener. How could we live like that? It's this particular little golden age we are celebrating today, this little island of freedom from the tyranny of monochromism, that has gripped this country since the early 60s. During this time, we saw RCA produce the floater radio. JVC made the balance type fashion radio. Hitachi made this. And RCA produced this sweet little radio, which they refer to as a color radio. From the RCA logo used, we can date this radio to 1968 or later, 
my guess would be around 1970. When I first found this radio in a flea market, I saw that the box said Made in Hong Kong expressly for RCA. Having seen many radios from the Hong Kong era that were in promising boxes, and having opened those boxes only to be disappointed with drab, bland radios inside, I was very pleasantly surprised to see this beauty come out of the box. Now have a look at this most interesting hang tag, labeled Color Radio. In it, RCA takes credit for the whole idea of colorful radios, a rather grand statement, while immediately equivocating on the idea. Quoting from the tag, Color is here, there, and everywhere. Now RCA adds color to radio, accent color that helps decorate a room, express a personality. Bright color, quiet color, and warm wood color. Plenty of black and chrome for traditionalists, too. This is Color Radio from RCA. End quote. What? Did you get that? They say they also offer black and chrome for traditionalists? That's considered traditional? At that point in consumer product design... Black and chrome styling was just a short-lived fad less than ten years old. How did that get to be perceived as traditional? Victorian, colonial, French provincial, those are traditional. But black and chrome? RCA's apology to traditionalists doesn't sound like much on the surface, but it is very revealing. It shows just how strong the anti-color movement was, and is so strong that RCA had to assure its adherents that they were safe. Color wouldn't hurt them. They could still have their color-free products. But in the end, the so-called traditionalists weren't having it. Color had to go. And go it went, to coin a phrase. In the years since... There have been only sporadic attempts every few years to challenge this virtual phobia of color. A few people would welcome these little revivals of color products. Most didn't know what to make of it and waited for their friends to criticize it before deciding that, well, they didn't like it either. Even collectors who ought to know better who revere the pink thunderbird and who cherish the turquoise transistor radio, even many of these collectors continue to let the color-phobic majority dictate what they're allowed on a daily basis to drive, wear, and own. The color-phobic majority. Break their rules and you're told to grow up. No. You're living in the past, they'll tell you. Living in the past. Okay.